Welcome to the Daily Soul Bar Show, Season 3. I am your host, Bola Abimbola. This is a show where we interview guest authors, coaches, and entrepreneurs to share their insights for the expansion of collective consciousness. Today, I have a very special guest all the way from Canada. Her name is Pauline Dugald. Welcome to the show, Pauline. Hello, and thank you for having me on your podcast. It's really nice to have you. Now, let me just read a bit about your bio before we start. Pauline Dugald is an artist and a mindset performance coach and energy healer. She has been exploring the subject of spirituality, psychology, mindset, and leadership for over 20 years. In the last four years, she started a coaching business that combines tools that elevate creative self-expression and strengthen analytical peak performance. I love that. That is fantastic. I would love you to tell us because it's a lot. It's a very diverse portfolio you've got. You know, you, we were talking before we came online that you you cover this issue of Marcus mindset is key. But when we do not combine mindset with that hard focus um, intentions, there really is a limit to how much we can really be, be expressing our our creativity, expressing our best outcomes, manifesting our best outcomes. So I love that you combine both the mindset and the heart, heart-centered spiritual aspect of human development. But I want to know how you came to this place of really getting that expertise. How, how did it all come about? It was a long journey from my perspective at this point. I started as an artist. I started in very creative pursuits. I was painting. I finished fine art school when I was 16. And I was participating in dance activities and everything around me was creative. Then at, uh, some time has passed and I entered high school, and then I had to go into college, I started looking at the world, and I made the decision to go into more analytical professions. And it was a gradual transition from very creative aspects to analytical aspects. And so in that journey, a lot of things have started making sense for me. At the beginning, when you're creative, your creativity flows and everything goes according to how you envision the world. But as you become more and more entrenched in the viewpoints of the society, in the belief systems that are imparted upon you, you start to lose momentum of who it is that you are. You start to lose yourself a little bit. And the time came at one point when I realized when I moved so far away from who I was and what I was all about at the beginning of my life that I had to return back. And my spiritual journey has actually been going along for many years. I was really interested in all kinds of spiritual aspects for a very long time. And since around 2000s, I actively started researching energy work techniques and everything that had to do with the spirit inhabiting the body. And so the time in 2019, the time came when I decided to merge all my analytical aspects and skills that I learned in this real world, my spirituality and all the things I've learned about energy, as well as my creative talents that came innate to me. And as a result, a coaching business was born because I was very much interested in helping others and support them with their mindset, because I believe that mindset creates our reality whatever happens in our mind reflects in our outer world and so i started diving deep into that and i wanted to help others to understand it better and as i delved more and more and deeper into the subject matter of coaching and combining it with spiritual aspects and i saw the results that i was producing in my clients it became crystal clear to me the importance of the mindset the importance of focus of how it affects our reality when we focus on specific things how our beliefs are constructed and how the emotions and feelings come out out of it as a result so through self-exploration and working with my clients i then discovered this integration of all the things that i have been about for the past who knows how many years and that has led me to the present moment where i am working with 
people to help them reframe their experience of this current reality? Oh, that's beautiful. I totally agree. You know, this is, there is definitely a need to understand the beliefs in the mind, the, you know, the perspectives that we are, that we are holding. And a lot of the times, some of these perspectives are um, higher perspectives. Sometimes they are lower perspectives because every aspect in life as it's as as a more positive higher perspective and a and a more fair based lower perspective and that's what my book is about daily soul bites daily soul bites is really about understanding the different perspectives of 31 different aspects that i share in the book and so i really i really resonate with that and i do want to find out how did you really find that limitation of the mindset because there's as i said at the very beginning there is a limit that we can get to when we're only focusing on the mind and we're not delving because that's the, the mind is is an energy entity it's not about the brain the brain is very different from the mind um, and the mind holds particular perspectives but unless we are actually allowing that you know that mind to be driven by the heart-centered perspectives, um, I do believe there is there is a limit to how much we can expand our consciousness, our individual consciousness. How did you come to that place where you were now in your business, not going to do in your personal life, but to, to actually begin in your business to want to integrate um, the mind perspectives or the mindset um, modalities with this with the more heart based spiritual modality that is an amazing question and the way that i see the mind i like this explanation when you inc incorporate the idea of higher version of yourself like the higher self the brain as an organ and then the mind so the way that i perceive it is that higher mind the soul the spirit whatever it is that is bigger than you are in this physical reality whatever is kind of all out there somewhere is the one that has all the information that is where we get inspiration from that is where we get ideas from and all the thoughts come from there the brain as an organ receives that information and then sometimes we also receive things through our senses which also translates in the brain and then the mind the mind is actually what I like about the explanation that I heard is that the mind's only job is to perceive. The mind does not have a capacity to conceive anything. It cannot create anything new. It can only perceive. It can only see and receive information as the brain has received. So every idea, every thought and every inspiration that the mind thinks has conjured on its own, it only received from the higher mind. But the critical point here is that on top of the mind, we have these beliefs that we have inherited from our environment, people around us, culture, society, what have you. Those beliefs are then d creating meanings for us. So it, it, it defines our experience. And based on those definitions of this reality, this is how our mind translates what it receives and the critical part that limits the expansions are those beliefs that if they apply meaning that is not preferable or the mind thinks that is going to create some kind of negative effect the mind will resist and prevent the body from moving towards those things so for example very easy to understand you have an idea of painting something like i'm going with it because i'm a painter so you have having this idea and then you you kind of get a canvas and then you stand in front of it and then you get these beliefs that you're not a painter nobody's gonna like it you would be wasting your time and you will stop yourself and not continue forth with that idea that higher self sent you because of these beliefs so that is the work that is essential in this process of expansion of consciousness of identifying those beliefs that are preventing the mind from fully receiving the information that comes from the soul higher self or what have you mm, yes totally the beliefs are very powerful and i would love to know a bit more about the modalities that you use um, i know you're also an energy healer and a peak performance coach how do you work with your clients? What can those who are watching this and want to connect with you? How would you, 
what can they expect when they when they connect with you? My approach has been called an action based approach because I always in inspire my clients to take some kind of action in the pursuit of what it is that we're working on. So that comes first. But in terms of my modalities, the number one thing that I rely on is the science of creativity and peak performance. We have quite a lot of information about it. It relates to neuroscience, it relates to psychology, it relates to other aspects of our being, sometimes physiology. So I rely on those findings and Low state has been defined as one of the aspects of peak performance. It's been researched by a number of people. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi is one of the people who called father of flow. And I base my methodology on those findings. And essentially it becomes the science of creativity. Because creativity can be dialed up. It can be improved. It could be enhanced by knowing the mechanisms involved in the process the mechanisms of the brain, the neurotransmitters involved, the brain waves, all of those things have been studied. And we have certain records of those right now that we can rely on and structure our approach. So that is what I use most and foremost. I've been trained with the Flow Research Collective, which is a collective of people who love to study flow science. And I've been drawing a lot of my methodology from there. In addition to that, my approach also goes into psychological aspects as found in some of the modalities of people like Carl Jung and others. And as well as I, I did, as an additional element, which is personal development and methodology of people such as Tony Robbins, that is also combined in my approach. And so... All of that together, plus the innate energy work that I have been doing without any specific naming of that particular modality, that all becomes my action-based approach. So with people, what I do is we usually create some form of plan of what it is that they want to achieve, but then we go and we adjust it. It's almost like a scrum and agile project management approach to that, a little bit of analytical thinking. We constantly adjust based on the results that have been received from taking those small actions that are required in the direction of the goal. And so that is what my experience of coaching has been, and my clients have been all referring to that as uh, action-based because they get to do things, they get to apply them in a different way, and through that application, they become different people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to know. I love that. I love the fact that you combine a range of different modalities, and I love the word flow because flow is so important in allowing ourselves to simply go along with the synchronicities that come at us. Synchronicities really are the coincidences, we call them. They're not coincidences. It's really the natural order of the universe. It's really how things are, you know, the higher self is driving the um, the, the existence, driving the things that we have to do, driving our intentions from a conscious and a subconscious and unconscious level. So it's it's really important to surrender to that to that flow. So surrender to the synchronicities. But how do you get your clients? Because it's it's one thing to project manage and to really be um, to have a plan. But how do you really get your clients to move from that place where they are now identifying that they have different beliefs? Because that's really key. I think that because for me, I struggled for a long time. To um, even though I started reading, I was reading books by Ramana Maharashi by the age of eighteen, understanding the different selves, understanding that silence, you know, that place of stillness, is 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 a place of infinite possibilities. It's a place of no thought, place of no judgment, and surrendering to that, because the ego is such an an entity that um, really wants to control based on the fear and the survival and the competitive. Um, beliefs that we have been conditioned with. So if you were to have a client who 
were struggling to say, for instance, move from a place of believing that they live in a world of lack. And they have all these beliefs about lack. And you're trying to get them to really understand their beliefs and move into a place that is more heart-centered, that allows them to move into that place of flow. How would you work with them to, to, to move from that place of the mind into the spirit, into the heart? How do you work with them? That is a very prevalent problem with a lot of people when their ego is in the way and it prevents them from being in the flow. And because, as you mentioned, beliefs and fears and whatnot. So there is a version of the... So let me just say that what I see in people is most of them operate in the approach. It, it is called by me. It means they are trying to do everything by themselves. They, so as I mentioned, the mind does not know how things happened. Mind can only receive information and does not conceive of the things that it gets. And so it has no ability to figure out how things actually going to happen. As Steve Jobs said, you can only connect the dots looking backwards. So the mind cannot predict and create some kind of way in which it moves forward. It cannot create those synchronicities. It thinks it can, but it cannot. And so what happens is that it can only recreate the same thing over and over again. And so it happens with us often when we have experienced one result and we want to have it again, we keep recreating the conditions and trying to do things the same way, hoping to get something of the similar nature. But as we know, the spirit has its own mind, its own agenda, and the synchronicity come from the spirit. So it's critical to understand that synchronicities only come when we allow them and when we are able to receive them. Until then, it's all just ego and the mind trying to recreate something and being stuck in the loops of the doing the same thing, getting the same result, getting the same frustrations, and repeating the cycle. So in order for that to happen, in order to stop that cycle of recreation of the same thing, the, there has to be a negotiation between the ego and the higher self. Because ego is a very frightful thing. It is constantly afraid for its survival. So in order for there to be a connection between the heart and the mind, coherence between the spirit and the body, between the spirit and the mind, there needs to be a negotiation. The ego needs to be made aware that it is not the enemy, it is being protected and cared for by the higher self, and that the higher self is really has all the desire to make life better for the ego. And that becomes an internal dialogue between the two. And the more the person allows that to happen, the more there becomes an agreement. Because when the higher self just tries to force things and move things out of the way, the, it creates a lot of resistance in the mind. And when the resistance comes in, it creates separation. And we move into the lower density of this kind of ex existence in this three-dimensional reality. And so that negotiation is critical. And once that happens, then the person is able to actually step aside and meditation helps to observe the mind that's what they call it observe the mind in meditation the person then be able to separate themselves a little bit and take a bird's eye view on the situation and be able to see what exactly are the beliefs that are running the show when the person is aware of those beliefs that is when the patterns end because when you're aware of your pattern, you no longer have it. You have become aware of it, you've shown the light on it, and any repetition of it further on will be as a result of a choice based on the meanings and definitions. If the person believes that being stuck in some kind of situation benefits them, they will continue choosing to recreate that pattern, creating limitations, and not hearing the higher self. So in order to move into the flow, of synchronicities, flow of life, and being more connected with your higher self, the person needs to be, first of all, open to the idea that it can happen. Then there needs to be a negotiation between the higher self and the lower self, higher self and the mind. 
And then there needs to be an observation without judgment of the patterns that have been present. And it sometimes can take a while, but that's that's part of the journey. That's that's why we're here for. We're here to get some kind of limiting beliefs, put them on ourselves, and then spend the rest of our lives trying to fix them or heal them or remove them from ourselves. So that's the journey. Oh, I love that. It is a journey. It is definitely a journey of practice, of understanding self, understanding that ego self, and understanding the higher self. And I love what you said about the inner dialogue. That dialogue has to happen for there to be trust, for there to be an, an understanding that that ego self feels safe. And I always say that surrender can only come from love. It can only come from that ego self feeling that it is love, feeling that it is safe, and it cannot be forced. So having someone like you to kind of guide that process, holding the space, um, is really, really critical. And I love what you said that by me, yeah, you know, trying to transform this self we have, we, you know, by the self alone, you know, it's it, it can be a challenge. So having someone who can can really help us to help that ego self to become um, more more of um, more of the of the passenger, whilst the higher self is driving the car. Um, so so to speak do you still use your fine art in your work actually i've added therapeutic art approach to my coaching because there is a lot to be said about the role of creativity as it applies to transforming the perception of this world and clearing the limiting beliefs so the art represents the modality that can help people sidestep their critical thinking mind because for the first, uh, in, a, in the first place, people who are very much based in this reality, they're trying to achieve something, they're driven, they're hardworking, they become entrenched in this concept of hard work and they became entrenched in this logical analytical thinking and what art does it is it quiets down that inner critic that is present during the critical thinking moments. And we need both. We need we need to be able to logically think and we also need to be able to relax into the ideas that are flowing naturally and so art is a gateway for those ideas to start flowing the way that i called my brand art diversion is because art creates a diversion for the mind so that you can hear the clarity of the inside flowing in when the mind is busy looking at the art creation. And so I have been adding therapeutic art approach to the coaching so that people can stop overthinking. When you are engaged in art, if it is up to your skill level, if you are feeling comfortable with whatever it is that you're doing, you can get into that flow state, which is a complete concentration. It is called being in the zone. Mm -hmm. That is its own flow and it is very rewarding. It feels extremely beneficial. And that is when the ideas flow. It mm -hmm. is associated with a the theta brain waves, which show, show up normally during our sleep stages. So if you're able to engage in some kind of artistic endeavor and let that brain wave to drop to theta, then you will have new ideas coming in. Then you will have insights and you might be able to see your own patterns and your own beliefs better so that you can negotiate between the higher self and the mind more accurately based on that. So that is how I use art in this approach, which helps people to slow down and be more present in themselves. Mm -hmm. I love that. What about energy healing? How do you use energy healing as a modality? So in energy healing, for the most part, I use it in order to enhance the flow of energy throughout the channels. We have chakra system, we have meridian system. And what I do is that it actually naturally flows when I'm with a person. The energy just starts flowing more. And if they need an enhancement of the energy flow in some areas, I can do the clearing of those energy centers specifically for them. And another thing I also specialize in is in entity removals. We have a lot of things that are floating around that can attach to people if they are in the lower vibration frequency. 
and so sometimes those things need to be removed because they will be blocking the flow of energy and so i help people clear those channels clear those blocks so that their creativity can flow better and it works on two aspects one is on the mind where you can consciously understand the limitations and belief systems and blocks that are present in the thinking mind but then the energetic blocks are harder to see and so i use the high frequency vibration type of energy that has been associated with reiki or seikim reiki to just move them along faster and speed up the way that those centers are vibrating and when we are in a higher vibration frequency we attract higher vibration things to us and ideas flow better and the communication with a higher self improves so that is how i do that mm -hmm. oh that's wonderful that's wonderful because i'm in the range of modalities so everybody's unique we're all unique, infinite pieces of, of infinite intelligence. How do you work? Do you do one-to-ones or do you do in groups? How do you work with your clients? I work one-on-one, -on -one, but I also have a group program that is six months and it is very deep and extensive and that is includes all aspects of how to move from by me to through me mode based on how our internal world can be changed in order to project different outer reality so that is a extensive six-month program but other engagements are just one-on-one -on -one. they could be shorter they could be longer they are really individually based and unique based on the person that i'm working with. so they could be three months they could be six months or they could be entire year one of the best client engagements i had was a year long where we gradually worked on certain aspects and at the end they had tremendous results because there was no rush it was flowing and they were able to take those small actions every week in and see a result and then adjust slowly based on that mm, i love that you know and i was gonna ask you this pauline because so, well, something that a lot of us sometimes think when we are in peak performance when we are achieving a lot of outcomes we are career driven we're ambitious we are you know we've studied we've trained and we are in the corporate world or we are doing our own business and the world the matrix is not really encouraging about going within there's not a lot of encouragement to really allow oneself to surrender, to understand that the exterior is a reflection of what is within you. And a lot of times, a lot of the real key, because there are so many different resistance that occurs within us, depending on the conditioning, on the background, on the experiences, on trauma, you know, so there are a lot of different things that come up within us to really stop us from, you know, even as we dive forward in that um you know, you know, in the matrix, in you know, in the corporate world, in our businesses, there is that resistance to go within. Sometimes we feel that, you know, we will slow down, we will not be as successful. Sometimes we feel that, you know, this particular experience we're having is the concrete one and the spiritual practice is woo-woo or is not real. How do, do you, have you come across that? you know, with your clients who feel they would rather focus on that business, focus on the career, on the peak performance, on working in the metrics, on following the conditioning, as opposed to being empowered beings who are really creating that reflection and, you know, in the flow, in the vortex, as Abraham Hicks will say. Yes, absolutely. That is one of the very prevalent patterns or ways of being for people when they are so entrenched in this physical reality they, that they believe it is real. Although many people have said that it is an illusion, it is a dream what we're dreaming. So, and that is really goes back to the concept of masculine and feminine. If you think about it, the internal world is all feminine. It is mysteri mysterious, it is unknown, it is chaotic, and the outer world is masculine. It is known, it is visible, it is tangible. And so 
for many decades, millennia, or as long as you want to consider, the world has been pressuring everybody to be in this outer world reality focus, to be in this masculine approach. And we have it clearly exhibiting it in the business world, in the outer world, everywhere you see, it's all masculine driven approach of achieving hard goals, going faster and doing, doing, doing. A lot of doing, not a lot of being, because being is the aspect of the femininity. And that has been repressed for many, many years, for a long time, because it is unknown, because it's hard to control. You cannot control the feminine chaos, just like the chaos in nature, the hurricane. You cannot control those things. But we want to control this reality. We want to control our experience and we do not trust our inner control that we already have built in. And so for a long time, everybody was encouraged to be in this outer reality, focus only on the physical and it has been showing up in a lot of us and it's been slowing us down. And now there is a breaking point where we have faced this, this distortion. And then the feminine started coming in back online and demanding attention as well. And so a lot of people who have been programmed, to say the least, to be in that achiever mode, find it very hard to slow down, to be in touch with their inner world, to be connected with their feminine creativity, because it is not a straightforward line, because it does not produce the same results same instant results we like instant results right now everything is instant these days and the feminine and internal world does not have that and so a lot of people feel uncertain about going in that direction because they cannot see immediate results right away and it takes some time it takes some time to reframe the thinking and shift the mindset to really integrate that inner feminine as well and so a lot of people would rather focus on the money, focus on the business, focus on the tangible things that they can see, smell, taste, or touch, because that is what they're familiar with. That is what they were brought up with and programmed with, and they acquired those beliefs and they included them as part of their reality. So that is the thing that is present. And if, if you think about creativity as well, Creativity is going deep into the internal world of unknown and bringing forth something that has never been seen. It is very similar to the creation of the baby. It comes out of nowhere. It's never been seen. And then one day it's just born. It is the it's essence of creativity. And when you are dealing with this outer world, it is all based on predictable structures. And those structures do not like change. And they do not like this unknown concept of something unpredictable. If you look at every organization, it is based on structures that work like machinery. And so those structures are very resistant to any kind of new information, to change, to creative chaos. And sometimes that is reflected in the work of creatives, that they get resistance from the outer world towards their creations because if they've never been seen before if it's something completely different completely new they're just bringing it in through their selves out of their inner world the world rejects that at the first sight because it's something that is brand new and the world likes things that it has seen before and so that is where we are right now we are at the precipice of shifting those things within ourselves and then we see them shifting in the outer world as well. And the balancing is taking place right now. And the integration of both the visible and invisible, the masculine and the feminine. Oh, I love that. And that is so beautiful. That is so true. It is It is so prevalent in our day to day. You know, in, in, and more and more people are actually um, beginning to understand that we're energy beings and that we are consciousness whether as a physical being or as a higher self spirit being. Um, but really it is still, you know, there are 8 billion of us and it's probably a very minute percentage that are really 
you know, d diving into that spirit self and, and having a spiritual practice on a daily basis, having a spiritual practice that keeps us in that flow, keeps us in that center, keeps us grounded using whatever modality that we, that, you know, and what, whatever modalities that, that worked last year may not work this year. So being willing to change the modalities that, um, that are giving us the outcomes and the outcome that we're seeking is to stay grounded, stay in that zero point. So I love the way you, 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 you know, you also work with your clients in getting them to be willing to go within because the best outcomes we can get, the physical ego mind is limited. It doesn't have the oversight, the overview that the spirit self has. So it is limited in the way it can create um, different solutions. Um, it's really more about um, being driven by fear. So there, there is there is a need to rise above that if we do want to really get that peak performance that we see. Peak, for, peak performance, really, of the physical ego self is nothing compared to peak performance of the spirit self. So I love that you're doing this um, and you're also kind of Bring in that integration, integration of the mind and the heart. How can people find you when they want to connect with you, Pauline? It is very easy to find me. I'm on almost all social media platforms, but the easiest way is go to artdiversion.com. From there, there are links to my YouTube channel, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. But artdiversion.com is the main hub where you can also find a mini book that I wrote on the maps of creative blocks. So if people are curious, how do they remove those blocks that block their creativity? Well, I created a mini book that shows some maps that help that helps with that. And one thing I wanted to say about peak performance is that the way that I see it is that it is an alignment between all those components, the higher self, the brain, the mind, and the body. When you align all those things and everything is working in unison and harmoniously, then the essence and authentic expression is able to flow out and people can be the perfect version of their unique expression that they came here to be. Thank you so much for sharing those really powerful insights. I'm really grateful that you joined me today, Pauline. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me on this podcast. It was a wonderful conversation. I'm really happy about that. Thank you, Pauline. And I would love to thank my listeners and um, audience for joining us today and to ask you to subscribe to the Daily Soul Buy Show, new episodes every Wednesday, and also to grab a copy of my book, Daily Soul Bites book. It's also available in audiobook now and um, on audible.com, audible.co.uk. And to also go to Pauline, Pauline's website. This is theartdiversion.com. And I do look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Daily Soul Bites show. Bye-bye. <laughs>